Hi everyone. I apologize for the delay in this final lecture. I didn't want to record it last week while I was sick and the holidays made this weekend a lot busier than I'd expected. Anyway, here we are, the last lecture during the last week of classes. By now some of you have finished up all the work for this class while others are still wrapping things up. Regardless, I wanted to offer a few final thoughts both on the ideas we've been exploring all semester and on the class itself. If you remember back to the very first lecture I asked you to watch, I rambled through a variety of terms and definitions that were meant to help you focus on our main area of study, dystopia. In that video, I discussed the literal and the adapted meaning of utopia. Remember, that's both the good place and no place. We also talked about cacotopia, a term that for obvious reasons never really took hold in the culture. Recently, through our reading of the essay by science fiction author Kim Stanley Robinson, we also added anti-utopia to our lexicon. But most importantly, in that first video, I offered a general definition of dystopia, something to go beyond the literal translation. The definition I offered then was a place which is depressingly wretched and whose people lead a fearful existence. One problem I still have with this definition is that it's just as applicable to a dystopian world as it is to a post-apocalyptic world. This definition doesn't suggest to us what causes that fear. However, you may have noticed that much of the reading and viewing I've asked you to do over the course of the semester has focused on that very question, what is the cause of the fear? Early on, we explored the idea of oppression through our reading with I of Iris Young's essay, and clearly that article had a strong impact on many of you, as it is easily the reading that gets most referenced in your discussion topics, blog posts, and research projects. I think, ultimately, that is an important component to include in our definition. Someone or something has to create that sense of fear in which the people live. Someone has to be the oppressor. Often, as we've seen repeatedly, that's the government. Whether it's the massive bureaucracy of Oceania, or Dr. Zayas's theocracy in Ape City, or the neo-puritanical stratocracy of Gilead, someone is causing that oppression. Someone is creating that fear. It's this that ultimately separates dystopian fiction and film from the merely post-apocalyptic. While it's possible for a dystopia to emerge from the ashes of an ap apocalyptic event, it's not a given. Before I wrap up, I would like to say how much I enjoyed this class this semester. As it was for many of you, this was the first asynchronous class I've taught here at Xavier. I did teach a few asynchronous classes before coming to Xavier, but that was over 15 years ago. It's been a great learning experience for me, and thanks in large parts to the honest feedback from many of you, I have a lot of ideas about how to improve the class when I teach it next, which I hope will be next spring. It's been a particularly challenging semester for many of us, so I appreciate your patience with me as I've learned and adapted, and I hope that you too feel that you've been able to both learn and adapt through this class. I will be posting some comments about each of the podcast episodes in the next few days. As I've generally done with discussions, I wanted to stay out of the mix until you all had your say. So I'll respond to the episodes I consider Season 2, Episodes 11 to 20, this week, and will respond to those in Season 3, Episodes 22 to 31, after Sunday. I've greatly enjoyed listening to both the insights you've offered through these projects, as well as the creativity you've demonstrated through them. Now I will wrap up with just a few reminders. By the end of the day on Sunday, please make sure you've done all of the following written and published blog post number 14. Remember, this is required of everyone. Also remember that the prompt for this one is more specific and directive than others, so please follow the directions carefully. Two, filled out and submitted your final self-assessment. It's essential that each of you offer your proposed final grade for this class. And three, completed the university's online course evaluation for this class. Again, I have no control over this. It will close at 12.01 a.m. on Tuesday, April 26th. 
So if you don't complete it before then, your feedback about this class will not be collected by the administration. All right, I think that's it. For those of you with finals coming up, do well. For those of you about to graduate, congratulations. To everyone, have a safe summer and take care.